Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is a former NFL wide receiver who turned some of his life's hard knocks into lessons that he now wants to share with you in his new book, The Greatest You. Ooh, I like that title. Mm -hmm. Please welcome author and motivational speaker, Trent Shelton. Hey, Trent! Hey. Hey, Trent! 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 Absolutely, it. absolutely. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So, of course, let's talk about your lifelong dream of being in the NFL. And for those who follow sports, we know that stands for National Football League, but not for long. Oh, exactly. You know, mm. lots of setbacks, lots of cuts. Tell us about the time in your life where you were pursuing your dream, but you kept getting cut and things were just, you just setback after setback. Yeah, well, I've been playing sports since I was five years old. So, I mean, that was my goal. So that was my identity. And for some people, it might not be sports, but it might be a job or relationship. Uh, went to Baylor, had a great career. But that's when my dream came true at the NFL, but my worst nightmare happened. I ended up getting cut probably eight or nine times, three mm -hmm. different teams, moving from city to city, buying things I shouldn't have bought, yeah. ended up going broke. Mm -hmm. So it was a tough time in my life. Wow. Trent, how did you get yourself through that rut? Because I, I, I have had friends who have actually played in the league and then they've had some misfortunes with it. And I'm telling you, it, it's some of them still hadn't come yeah, back yet. Yeah, they're they're still like struggling with that. So how did you bounce back? Well, my faith with God for one. And I just realized he had a plan for my life. Mm -hmm. And then me having my son. Uh, me realizing that my son's going to follow my footsteps regardless. So either I can be accept this failure for the rest of my life or pick myself up and do something with my life and leave a better path for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And of course, in your book, The Greatest You, you talk about all of these setbacks. And one in particular, uh, one of your closest friends uh, took his own life. Yeah. And yesterday, we kind of talked about it with Ayanna Van Zant. What is it or what can you share about men and how they need to vocalize their pain? Yeah, well, you need to open up. I always say, you know, silent battles are the worst battles to face, and what you suppress will lead to depression. Mm -hmm. And so one of the best things you can do, the best, the three best words, I need help. It's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make you less of a man or less of a person. And when you ask for help, more than likely you'll receive it. And when you face your reality, as I like to call it, when you stop running from that war in your life, in your mindset, and you face it, uh, it gives you the opportunity to actually fix what you're trying to heal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have a beautiful prayer on Instagram that you've shown to lots and lots of people. How has that changed people's lives, you think? Oh, through Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's changed a lot. And I never wanted to be a motivational speaker. Mm -hmm. um, and this right here, dear God, I'm not OK. Yeah, exactly. That's a prayer that I pray with myself all the time. And I still go through things. You know, I'm not all the way there. I tell yeah. people all the time, I still battle with depression. but. I turn to my faith and I turn to the things that really help me. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. So your positive messages on social media has taken on a life of its own. Why is yeah. it important for you to consistently pump that energy out into the world? Yeah, because people need it. I mean, I remember I was going through my battle and my struggle and I'm sure it was there, but I wasn't mm -hmm. looking for it. But I told myself it was a promise to my friend that committed suicide that I would be a voice for people. Um, I would be a voice of you know, inspiration and hope for people. And that was my promise to him. Mm -hmm. And I always say he's more alive in my life than he's ever been because mm -hmm. of that. That's good, my goodness. Trent. Way to use that as, a, as motivation. Yeah. Something that was so tragic. Uh, lessons for black boys in particular. We, you know, we talked about Jay-Z and how, you know, he's Marcy Projects and, you know, he has a very, for what people would consider a checkered past. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Look how he kind of used those same skill sets and now he's a billionaire. Yeah, he uh, just changed the product. Yeah, the hustle changed, is still it's there. The same. It's still the same hustle, right. it's just a different product. Right. Uh, what, do you, what do you hope to impart to fatherless boys uh, throughout this book? Yeah, well, I just want them to look at me as inspiration, whether it be, you know, Jay-Z or whoever. And, like, just being a motivational speaker, I'm not your typical motivational speaker. When I first started, they told me to cover my tattoos. I had dreadlocks. I should wear a suit. And when I go on stage now, the businesses, I'm myself. And yeah. so I want to tell kids out there, be who you are. Uh, I'm not telling you to go to a job interview wearing anything, yeah. but be who you are and just know that you're, you're enough. And everything you've been through will help you. Um, prepare for that right moment for your life. And then you can relate to young boys when you go to, exactly. yeah. you know, speak to young boys. Sometimes a suit is like off-putting, but when you come in looking like this, yeah. you know, you can yeah. definitely motivate the people more. I think they resonate with you more. I appreciate uh, yeah, Very that. relatable, absolutely. absolutely. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, um, how do you feel in reference to athleticism and also activism? Yeah. How do you make those two work for you? Well, I think in anything, not just sports, but I mean, if you have something you stand up for and you believe in, I think it's your job to use your platform to stand up for it, you know, period. Mm -hmm. So I think with sports, obviously you have a voice, you have a platform. And as an athlete, the thing I tell athletes, either you can use that platform for absolutely nothing to glorify yourself, or you can use that position to actually bring light on situations that you would stand up for. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure you're very proud of Colin. 
Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, big time. And then what he has done, I mean, what he did as far as being a martyr, now the NFL, if you saw that report yesterday, they put like $2 million into social change groups. Do you think that he kind of was the catalyst to that? I think so. Yeah. I mean, at first, you know, I think in anything, when you stand up for something that goes against the grain, people yeah. kind of criticize you, but mm -hmm. Colin will be a hero. I mean, he's a hero now, but later on, he'll be in history books for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you're a father of three. You mentioned your yes. first son, but mm -hmm. you're a father of three. What has fatherhood taught you? It taught me responsibility. Um, you know, with my daughters, we'll have another daughter coming, but with my daughter, come on now. I want to uh, <laughs> be that example for, for, her, for them yeah. to say that's what a man is. And for my son, the same thing, to yeah. be like, this is what a man is. And yes. so I'm not perfect by any means, but I'm progressing, and hopefully I can give them the tools to help build a better Beautiful future. Beautiful family. Oh, my Thank goodness. You. Really quickly, one characteristic that you would find in what you would call a person who is a great person, mm. what would that characteristic be and why? That's good. Um, I would say servanthood. Yes. Ooh, that's good. Um, because I feel like we all are called here on this earth to serve and mm -hmm. to better people. So service is not selfish. And mm -hmm. so I love people who are all about serving people. Yes. And what would you like for people to take away from your book? Uh, I would like them to take that the greatest you is not something that the world has. It's not something external. The greatest you is inside of you. Woo! Mm -hmm. That's why, Trent is on, that's why Trent is on the show. <laughs> yes, thank why? you so much again <laughs> for, for sharing your story and life lessons with us today. The book, The Greatest You, can be found wherever fine books are sold, and you can follow Trent on the gram at Trent Shelton. Thank you so yeah. much, Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, yes, yes.